Thank you very much for joining us today, Diana. You've literally just walked off stage uh, fresh from the panel. I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the session and exactly what your viewpoints were. The session was about fragmentation in the trading space. Uh, the impending regulations that will hit many trading firms and trading venues and how the businesses are going to have to adapt their business model in the new world where volumes could actually be shrinking rather than growing, which they have been for many years. If they are shrinking, what, what are your recommendations? How do you think businesses will have to adapt? Businesses are going to have to trim their expenses, cut costs, because revenue will not be growing. Uh, they're going to have to find new things to do uh, in order to make up for the revenues that they will not get from their existing activities. Uh, that is going to be quite challenging, uh, especially when you look at the wider economy, very few things are growing. So obviously you, uh, you are a clearing house and people looking to reduce uh, the cost coming through their clearing houses, how is that going to affect you with decreasing volumes? We are in the business of helping people reduce costs. So the more trades that can come through a CCP, the more netting that we can do for the firms that trade. One thing that will happen early next year is the introduction of full interoperability among uh, the four CCPs that will collectively clear for Chai Expats and soon many more other platforms, we hope. Uh, when that happens, a firm that trades on any of the venues created by any of the four interoperating CCPs will be able to concentrate all their trades through the CCP of their choice. And in so doing, they will save collateral costs and they will save uh, settlement costs, which by the way can be quite hefty. Uh, therefore, interoperability is actually coming at exactly the right moment when the industry really, really need to reduce their cost. And we look forward to playing a very big part in it. So how are the new proposals in MIFID going to be affecting uh, EuroCCP? I believe that there are uh, proposals in MIFID that will help create more trading venues uh, because of the proposal for OTFs. Uh, the OTFs being venues just like uh, the MTFs in many ways uh, will benefit from introducing central counterparty clearing so that whatever is traded on the OTFs could all be netted through a CCP. Uh, that will really give firms a lot more uh, freedom to, to trade wherever they want. The same security traded on any venue that is cleared by their CCP of choice will drop into that CCP, all be netted down into a net long or net short position at the end of the day, one settlement and then they're done. So from your perspective, this directive could be absolutely fantastic then? Well, from our perspective, we look to deliver value to the industry to help the industry cope uh, with these changes that are being brought about by new regulation. Uh, there was a lovely phrase from the panel just before, which uh, I, I think pretty certain it was you that said it, that talked about the ultimate fragmentation, which is uh, around the Eurozone crisis and the dissolution, potential dissolution of the Eurozone. What effect do you think that, should it happen, will have on the capital markets? I think before that happens, which is the run up, if that were to happen, uh, we're going to see a lot of stress in the financial markets. Uh, we need to be quite careful uh, in which firms will be able to survive the onset of the crisis. And that is precisely when a central counterparty can deliver the most value to the markets, because we stand between two counterparties and we help to centrally manage that risk. Uh, before we get to the ultimate fragmentation, there is a period, I think, uh, when the best CCPs will be able to shine and deliver their true value to the trading community. Now, in terms of the, the more current fragmentation uh, and, and the whole issue of the OTFs again, um, is the fact that what a lot of people are saying there, with these, there'll be so many that are being constructed that will become basically an unmanageable mess, was one of the fears that was being discussed inside. I, I am assuming you probably don't agree with that, given that you're going to play a large role as being one of those people bringing order and bringing control to that huge pool. We will try our best to make it less messy, uh, but if it is going to have a, a lot of cost implications on the firms, those firms might need to adjust their business model. So 
I don't think that the OTFs will be imposed on the industry. It's for firms to decide whether they will transform and adapt their business model to the world of the OTFs. And if that were to happen, and for those firms that go that way, we are there, uh, ready to help them uh, manage the counterparty exposure. And also, uh, there's been throughout the day discussions about the consolidated tape and what that might do for uh, being brought through MIFID if it may potentially end up being commercialized. Do you think that actually a danger of it becoming worse and more fragmented as, as a tape, as, as more competition trying to, to best each other? And what, what actually will that do? I believe the model for the consolidated tape is a commercial model where uh, it will be providers competing uh, to sell their services and, and that uh, is normally a good thing because as we've heard in the panel competition is essential for innovation uh, and competition is good. Too much competition can raise the costs uh, but that I think is an essential phase to get to consolidation uh, to larger players and if those larger players then abuse their dominant position and charge too much for their services and become lazy, uh, then that will invite new competition, niche players who will challenge them. And that is a very good cycle to go through. Uh, just finally as well, and I'd be interested to, to see your viewpoint as uh, someone who so far seemed to be very much in support of a lot of the new directives. One of the, the constant terms coming up just now was uh, the daft draft. And any particular, are there any particular points that you've seen people talking about that certainly need to be looked at again, at the very least. Well, I think it is still a draft. Right? The purpose of a draft is to be uh, able to let the market participants comment on it. Uh, it's not done yet, and I think the process works, because we now have a draft. Whichever part that whoever does not like, whoever has the opportunity to make their point to the policy makers, uh, and I think forums like this is a very good place to have some of the issues surfaced and have a very healthy debate. Uh, and I think that there were regulators in the room as well who have heard some of the comments made. Uh, therefore, I believe that it is very essential for such issues to be discussed openly at such fora. Well, thank you very much for speaking with us today. Uh, it was absolutely brilliant. I look forward to speaking to you again soon.